I just finished reading the book The Deep Today by Rivers Solomon with David Diggs, William Hudson, and Jonathan Snipes. And this was a really excellent little book, so I wanted to tell you about it. This book was published in 2019, and it was nominated for the Hugo and Nebula Awards, and it won the Lambda Literary Award. But to understand the book's origins, we need to go back a little further to 2017, when this American Life commissioned the experimental hip-hop group Clipping to write a song for their episode on Afrofuturism. Their song, which is also called The Deep, was nominated also for a Hugo Award, and it was inspired by the mythology of the electronic group Drexia. That mythology imagines a utopian world underwater populated by Drexians who are the descendants of pregnant women who were thrown overboard during the slave trade. The fetuses adapted to breathing underwater and created an entire civilization underwater. And that is the population that River Solomon's book follows. Obviously, the Drexian people, or the Wajin Ru, as River Solomon calls them, are fantastical people. They're fictional, but the history that they are based on is absolutely true and horrifying. Pregnant African slaves were thrown overboard during the slave trade towards the Americas, and in general during the slave trade, over a million people were killed during these voyages. So this book is enlightening in that it drew my attention to this piece of history, and it's also super entertaining and thought-provoking because the world building, it's like understated, it's kind of vague, but it has big implications on what this people could be like and what a utopian society might be like, uh, what they might keep and what they might leave from our society. The book itself is only 163 pages or a four-hour audiobook, and the audiobook is narrated by David Dick. So I do recommend the audiobook. 163 pages includes the afterword, which really brought the whole book together and made me want to make a video about it. The afterword is by Clipping, the hip-hop group. And then if you've got the text version of the book, there's also discussion topics and questions at the end. So what actually happens in the book then? Well, it's about the Wajin Ru people. Their history is traumatic, of course, and difficult to carry with you, so they assign the task of remembering their history to a single person in their population who they call the historian. And once a year, this historian joins the rest of the Wajin Ru to remind them of their history before they then give it back to just the historian who can carry that burden for the rest of the population. This way, only the historian suffers or not, depending on how the history affects them, and the rest of the population gets to have an emotional tie to their history without letting it cause them current day trauma. In the book, we are following the current historian who is a young woman named Yetu. She got the history when she was very young from the previous historian. It really affects her quite deeply. She will be just gone from her body basically for days or even months at a time within these rememberings because they are quite immersive and they feel like they're happening to you. So. If the person you're remembering died, you remember dying, among other experiences. So Yetu doesn't know how much longer she can handle being the historian, and when she begins the next remembering ceremony, she leaves in the middle. So how will Yetu get on as her own person, because she's never really been an individual? And how will her people get on having to keep these memories inside of them without guidance? That is the story of this book. So there are a number of major themes in this book, cultural and individual memories, memory, intergenerational trauma, of course, are prevalent themes, uh, how, how to cope with those things, racism, speciesism a bit as well, because the Washington Roo people are not quite human, and so we oftentimes see how the land dwellers treat them as fish or as animals, and we get to see human behavior from the animal point of view. Belonging is also a major theme here, what it means to belong to a people, to a history, to yourself. This is also a queer story because the Wajin Ru mate in a non-normative way, and there's other queer elements that come about later on in the book, which I won't spoil. And then the theme that I found most interesting in this book was one of collectivity versus individuality and how to balance those things. Yetu wants to escape her people's collective memory to ha gain her own individuality back, but if she leaves her people with those memories, then everybody else will suffer. So which is more important, her individuality or her people's well-being? The reason that I found this super interesting too is because it's a theme that's woven into the writing of this book and also the writing of Clipping's songs. Clipping decided from the beginning that they were not going to use the first-person perspective, and in the song 
the deep in particular, the only pronoun they use is y'all. And then in the book, The Deep, when they are in the rememberings, they use the pronoun of we, us, ours. So you'll get entire chapters in the book that are said from that point of view, since when they are remembering, it is like they are experiencing, so it is like they are multiple. And that was just a super interesting point of view to read from, because I don't know that I ever have before. And since we're talking about the writing style, let me see if I can give you an example. So for instance, this is in uh, Remembering. We close our eyes in Asha's arms, listening to the water, to the noise of the city, to our kindred all around us. There are so many of us now, we could hardly be called strange fish anymore. We have made a place in this sea. All the fluttering, building, loving, hunting, embracing, mating, we hear it all. Our presence unmistakable. A whole chorus of the deep. Wajin Ru. We are not Zatialeu. We are more vast, more beauteous than that name implies. We are a song and we are together we remember. So there's a little sample of the writing style. The world building in this book is also super fascinating. The rules of the world help create the themes of the book. However, I will say that the rules of this world are also easily questioned in that they are a bit vague and therefore maybe flimsy. And if you are a person that needs like really logical rules that can't be broken and you're going to get distracted by more magical elements that don't necessarily make sense, then maybe this book isn't for you. On the other hand, if you are a person that from just a little bit of world building likes to imagine the world that that implies, then this book's definitely for you. You could have a lot of fun imagining imagining the implications from the little pieces of world building that River Solomon gives you. And I think that's almost the intention because Drexia, the original electronic group that Clipping was inspired by, most of their music is instrumental. And so all of that mythology was kind of co-created and this entire mythology, the whole story is kind of co-created. So you as a reader also get to add to that world building and that mythology. If you liked this, then I think you might like The Seep by Chana Porter. It has an interestingly similar name, The Deep and The the Seep, that's coincidental, but that one is also a queer sci-fi with quite magical, whimsical feeling elements. It's also sort of teetering on the edge of utopia and dystopia, and you're not sure which way the rules of this world will lean. It's also very short and presents a lot of interesting ideas that you could spend hours pondering after reading it. And then the other one you might also like is Follow Me to Ground. It's also short. It's also kind of weird. It's also about a people that are not quite human and the rest of society are kind of like interested in and dependent on but afraid of them. I will say I did not like Follow Me to Ground very much, so I can't necessarily recommend it. And I did think that The Deep was the best of these three books, so if any of this is interesting to you, you should read it. But if you read this and you want something similar, maybe The Seep, maybe Follow Me to Ground. Those are the ones that it most reminded me of while reading. If you've already read and enjoyed this book, let me know in the comments section below. And if you are now adding it to your TBR, I would love to know about it. It's a really brief one, so it's like even if you don't love it, ugh, it was just a four-hour audiobook. Have a great rest of your day!